Hey, good evening, Valley Middle. Tonight we're going to work on finding the volume of rectangular prisms. Before we do that, let's get to a fun trivia question. It relates to one of our problems. Who are these two dudes, and what is the name of their TV show? Why are they underwater? I don't know. Sorry. Tonight's target, 11.9a. I can find the volume of a rectangular prism on three. One, two, three. Let's do this thing. All right. What is the volume of this fish tank? I can tell you this, it's a big one. 24 feet wide, 12 feet deep, or wide, and 14 feet tall. Well, to find the volume of something like that, it's really simple. You just multiply the three measurements together. So here's my length, my width, and my height. I just take and put those numbers into a uh, number sentence, 24 times 12 times 14. It's multiplication, so the order doesn't matter. But we're using this formula here, length times width times height. So you just multiply those three numbers together. Let me grab my calculator. Uh, 24 times 12 times 14. And you get 4,032 feet. So I'm going to put that up here, grab it out of my hiding spot. 4,032 feet. And I'm done, right? Wrong. 4,032 feet cubed. If you're trying to figure out whether it's square or cubed, you've got three measurements here. One, two, three. So it's like three feet. Feet cubed. Centimeters cubed. Whatever it is. For each measurement you have, for each dimension, you add an exponent. So if there's just two, like if you were just trying to find the base of this, it would be 24 times 12. There's two measurements there, so that would be squared. Two measurements, an exponent of two or a square. All right, let's get to the vocab for the night. Here it is, volume, the space occupied by a three-dimensional object. The volume of a rectangular prism, you can get it by multiplying the length times the width times the height, or the base times the height. And I'll talk about that at the end. It's the same thing. They just combine the length and the width. Uh, here it is, right, cut, um, cut and pasted right out of your book. Volume equals BH, base times height, or volume equals length times width times height. I use this one here. I just think it's a little bit easier. So here's our first example. Here's a cube. Um, that actually looks like more of a rectangular prism. And we've got one side is 5 centimeters. We've got a side that's 4 centimeters. We've got a side that's 3 centimeters. So you've got 5 times 4 times 3. 5 times 4 is 20 times 3, 60 centimeters cubed. Exponent of 3, you got three measurements. Okay? It's just that simple. Let's go ahead and try our first example together, and then we'll get you right into doing some on your own. What is the volume of this rectangular prism? Well, I do the same thing. I establish my measurements. Length, 9.5. The depth, or the width, 5 meters. Height, 3 meters. I put them into a number sentence. 3 times 9.5 times 5. Pop that right into the calculator. This is how you would show your work on, a, on a, um, a test. You could write down these measurements and or write down this number sentence. Uh, three, whoops, sorry about that. Times three, time, yikes. Three times 9.5 times five equals 142.5. Grab that over here, slide it out, and notice that I have it cubed. Three measurements, you use an exponent of three. One for each of the measurements. All right, your turn. What is the volume of this rectangular prism? Go ahead and pause it and grab your calculator. I see dead people. All right, it's been a while since I threw that one at you. Let's see how you did. Uh, pop the three measurements in, 3.75 times 7.5 times 10, you get 281.25 centimeters cubed. Awesome, and I'm just going to take and throw that answer right down here in case my picture is in front of it so you can see it. Good job. Whoops, I forgot the cubed. Make sure it's right. All right. Yeah, but. Here's a yeah, but. The first yeah, but. What happens if they throw a net at you? and say, hey, what is the volume of this prism? 
You can do this. You just have to establish the three measurements. So this would be the bottom, and this would be the top. See how I have the colors arranged for you? And this is one set of sides. We'll determine how long it is. And here's another set of sides. We can use that to determine how high it is. So here's the height. It's going to be too high. It's two here and two here. So this is how high it's going to be. It's going to be four units wide and six units long. I just pop those measurements in. Slam, bam, thank you, ma'am. Two times six times four. Doesn't matter about the air or the order at all. Two times six is 12, times four is 48 units cubed. We don't know what these things are. We can't call them centimeters, we're not sure. So we just call them units cubed. All right, your turn for kind of a tricky one using that same logic. What's the volume of this prism? Well, let's see how you did. You could just take and count those out and find that it's three this way, three this way, and six this way, and pop them in. Three times three times six, three times three is nine, times six is 54 units cubed. Very nice. All right, one more. What is the volume of this prism? And I'd like you to try using that base height formula. Go ahead and give it a shot. Pause it. All right. Well, this is actually kind of a real life problem. Looks like somebody's office, and it's a pretty nice sized one, if I say so myself. Here are your measurements. 3 times 25 times 12. Now the base is going to be the bottom of it, 32 times 25. So if you find the base, you find 800. And then you multiply it by the height, which is 12. Is the answer any different? Absolutely not. 32 times 25 times 12, it's still 800 times 12, just like here you've just combined the first two measurements into the base times 12, which is 9,600 feet cubed. That is a big office, like way big, because 800, most bedrooms are maybe, a big bedroom would be a couple hundred feet square, uh, you know, the base would be a couple hundred feet and usually the ceilings are only eight feet high. So this is a very large office and it's also very tall. The average height of a bedroom in your house is probably eight feet. Even in our classrooms, I think they're 10 feet, possibly nine, but I think they're, actually, they're nine feet in the classroom. So you can see that that's a very large, very tall office. All right, here's your ticket to the show. It's kind of an interesting one today. I'm just gonna pause it and let you take a look at it. Which box is bigger? What's the difference in the volume? All right. I think you've written down those measurements. If not, you can pause it. Let's take a look at the uh, answer to the trivia question. Who are these two dudes? What is the name of their TV show? This is Wade and Brett, and they're from Tanked. And with that, I'd like to tank you very much for watching. Ha, ha.